So in this first module, we're going to look at just an introduction to Windows 10, the latest Microsoft operating system, just recently having hit the shelves. We're gonna start by taking a look at what makes Windows 10 different. Now, how is it different than Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1? And it's more than what you might think. Uh, it's more than just a whole slew of new features, which there certainly are, uh, but it's, it's, it's a fu more fundamental than that as we'll see in that, that first section or in this first section of an introduction. Then we are gonna to start to go through the various features, uh, the start menu, the new settings app, uh, the search assistant nicknamed Cortana, uh, and a number of other uh, options that you do have in Windows 10. And we'll look at navigating and using Windows 10. Some of this will be familiar to you. It depends really if you come from Windows 7 or if you've already spent some time in Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, other things are gonna be completely new uh, and very much streamlined. So let's get started by looking at what is different about Windows 10. The Windows 10 is really not like its predecessors in a number of different ways. And it's not just cosmetic, although some of the things will be uh, in, in a cosmetic fashion, but it's not just a new revision of the operating system. Uh, it is the, uh, what's said to be possibly the final operating system that Microsoft will produce, and it's definitely the culmination of all of the previous operating systems, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. If you're not overly familiar with that, I, I would say that you know in Windows 7, we had a great product. It was a perfect replacement for Windows XP. It fixed some of the issues, or most, most of the issues, that Windows Vista ha had. But then Microsoft, very shortly after that, came out with Windows 8. And with Windows 8, they were trying to design an operating system with an interface that would span across multiple devices. So Windows phones and the tablets, your, your Surface and Surface Pro, uh, as well as various other vendors and the PC would all have the same interface. And you probably know what I'm talking about. It's the infamous start screen that not a lot of people really enjoyed. They didn't like it. They wanted the old start menu back. They didn't uh, really dig the whole tiled interface and, uh, and those metro tiles, which is what they were, they were called. And so Microsoft went back a little bit in Windows 8.1. Uh, we went to the desktop by default as opposed to the start screen. They did provide a little sub menu uh, over on the left-hand side and a start button uh, you know, to, to facilitate users who didn't really like that, who didn't have a tablet, didn't, weren't using this on a, a mobile device. What we see in Windows 10 is a culmination of all of those things. Uh, and so you say there, the final evolution of the start experience, because we've got a merger of the two. Uh, we've got the tiled interface in addition to a standard start menu, but it's all collected in one place. You have an easy way of turning on tablet mode and going full screen with your apps, which in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, when you were talking about Windows Store apps, that wasn't an option. They always went full screen. You know? And so you've, you've got some... Uh, You've got some changes there that shows that Microsoft is actually listening to people. They are trying to design a Windows operating system with an interface that will work across multiple devices. And so Windows 10 was created to span a wide range of uh, devices. We also have a new updates model. A new updates model we'll look into uh, in more in just a second, but essentially when I say that this is quite possibly the last major Windows release we'll see, what I mean is that incremental updates are going to come instead of whole operating system updates. Right? This is just the word out on the street at this point, but we're not supposed to be expecting a Windows 11. We're supposed to be expecting a Windows 10.1. 10.2, 10.3, on and on we could go. And these are incremental releases that will be released for free uh, to you know, individuals who own Windows 10, and it will just be additional enhancements, new features, you know, changes to the operating system, but Windows 10 is it, or so they're saying uh, at this point. Ultimately, we may see Windows 10 being offered as a service, much like Office 365 and Microsoft Azure, where it is 
uh, provided to you for a yearly type of subscription. The jury's still out on some of those. We don't know exactly what all that's going to be, but that hopefully can show you that Windows 10 is fundamentally different than its predecessors. A little bit more on that new updates model. Essentially, it's just the concept of continuous improvement. And so Microsoft has released Windows 10, and now they will work on improving it. They won't immediately jump to Windows 11. They'll be looking at uh, and examining feedback from their customer base, and they will then be addressing whatever issues arise. If there are bugs in the code, then we can fix those through you know, hot fixes and updates. If they are additional features or tweaks to some of the current features, then those can be added in an incremental fashion. And so the new features are gonna be delivered through Windows Update as opposed to being set aside until the next major release. Uh, and there's a couple of rings, and this kind of depends on whether you're part or were part of the Windows Insider previews, uh, whether you have a software licensing agreement with Microsoft. Uh, and so, you know, we don't have to hold fast to these, but it just kind of gets us the idea. If you're on the fast ring of the Insider Preview, then you get updates as they are released immediately. They're pushed to your device and you'd be able to take advantage of any new features. If you're on the slow ring, you wait a month or so, you know, and it gives some time for those updates to be evaluated by others before they're made available to you. And the current branch is it's not really a part of the whole insider preview. It's when it's officially been released to the public. Uh, okay, and so there is even another one, and that's on the enterprise side of things. Um, the uh, long-term service branch, LTSB is what it's being called. And so enterprises with a software licensing agreement can uh, essentially you know, subscribe or as a part of their subscription have the provision of these updates. Windows 10 is also different because it has a heavy reliance and integration with cloud-based services. Uh, you certainly could argue that Windows 8 and especially Windows 8.1 definitely had uh, some integration with the cloud through the use of OneDrive and OneDrive for Business, uh, but it's even more so in Windows 10. In Windows 10, as we will see uh, at some point, you have the option to join a domain, a regular Active Directory domain services domain that's on-premises, or you have the ability to join a Microsoft Azure domain. Uh, and that's right a part of the initial setup when you're setting up one of the business versions of Windows 10. That is definitely different. More and more companies are, are outsourcing, if you will, uh, the hardware for their virtual machines. They're hosting those in a public cloud provider like Microsoft Azure. And so Windows 10 is able to join those Azure Active Directory environments. Uh, you also have tight integration with Office 365. There are apps in the Windows Store for PowerPoint, for Excel, for Word, and they are free, but they are free from a read-only perspective. Okay? And so you can open up files and you can view them, but you can't make any changes to them unless you had full-blown PowerPoint. But all you have to do is go into the Windows Store, say I want PowerPoint, say I want to upgrade, yes, I'm going to pay seven bucks a month for personal or home use, and you're immediately linked to Office 365 and you have access to all of those applications. So it's tightly integrated there. Windows in Tune is gonna be something that we have to spend more time on later. When we start getting into some of the enterprise features of Windows 10, uh, if you're looking at the outline of the exam for 697, you see in Tune is actually an entire section at roughly if I remember correctly, 10, 11%, something like that of the exam is on Windows in Tune. So we're gonna have to spend some time there. What is it? It's the mobile device management platform that Microsoft has actually been working on and enhancing for, uh, for at least a couple of years. Uh, it's sort of behind the scenes. You, you necessarily hear a whole lot about it. You know, we hear of System Center and Configuration Manager, but Windows in Tune has been being developed for quite some time. And it gives the ability to register devices, to fully manage devices. And we're talking about 
devices, we're talking about PCs, tablets, phones, anything that can run Windows 10, which is a wide range of devices. So we'll need to be familiar with Windows Intune and we'll see the integration uh, that is there. OneDrive is automatically included with Windows 10. Uh, that's OneDrive Personal. You have a Microsoft account, you have a certain amount of space uh, with OneDrive. It's their cloud-based storage solution. Of course, if you're with Office 365, you get to increase that. Uh, I believe the initial intro introductory number is one terabyte of storage space if you're using Office 365 on a uh, on a monthly monthly basis okay but just like windows 8 and windows 8.1 onedrive is integrated with the operating system so you have a constant synchronization of your documents if you sign into a new pc running windows 10 and you provide your microsoft account you immediately have access to all your apps you immediately have a synchronization of your account picture and desktop settings. You have immediate access to all of your documents that are stored in OneDrive. So it's definitely you know, highly connected to the cloud. So those are some of the things that make Windows 10 fundamentally different. That's why I started out with this section. We're not even really getting into uh, the new features and examining them just yet. But from a foundational perspective, Windows 10 is going to be much different than its predecessors. Start with new learning now.